Using some examples from my wave pool retreats here in Australia, I want to talk about the importance of the bottom turn. That is transitioning from the bottom of the wave to the top of the wave with speed and power in order to do a maneuver. Let's jump into it now. If you're not subscribed already, make sure you do so now and hit that notification bell. This episode is brought to you by my online surf school, The Surfer's Roadmap, your go-to for all your surfing progression. Check it out at the link in the description below. Now a good bottom turn is all about transitioning you from the low point of the wave to the high point of the wave. You've got to remember that the bottom turn isn't in itself a maneuver, it's a transition. And it's an important distinction because a transition implies that you're still maintaining and holding on to kinetic potential. That is tension in the body that's required to be expelled during a maneuver. If we expel that energy during our bottom turn in an inefficient or suboptimal way, we're going to end up in the position on the wave where we want to turn with a suboptimal amount of speed. And quite often, doing a successful maneuver relies on speed. It's just like riding a bike. If you try and turn a corner too fast and you're going too slow, you'll topple over. However, if you are maintaining a good speed, you'll have momentum, gyrocoptic stability, I believe is the word, and you'll be able to turn fast without falling down. So let's use a couple of these coaching examples uh, from the wave pool and have a look at how the surfer might have been better off to hold on to their bottom turn longer or apply a different sort of bottom turn. So you can see the first example here, the surfer finds a really nice position on the way down to the bottom turn and finds a nice sort of low point to come out of. This is really important because on the way down the face of the wave, we want to ease into compression. We actually want to use the natural shape of the wave to enhance and uh, accentuate gravity and our drop down the wave should actually also simultaneously be a sink into a compression into that coiled spring position that I've talked about before. That way we're loaded, right? And then we can unload to get up to the top of the wave. Loaded, compressed, coiled spring, all the same sort of um, same sort of word here, same sort of meaning. Now out of that bottom turn, you can see the surfer begins to release quite early. Now you can see that his board is actually still probably facing to the bottom left of screen here. And where he extends, that's where generally speaking his energy will go. When he's actually trying to get up into this top half of the wave with the maximum amount of speed, if he extends early like that, I find that a lot of the energy tends to be thrown off here towards the beach with all, all this spray, as you can see, rather than being held onto and directed at the section. So if we use now a side-by-side, -side, and this is quite a subtle sort of difference, you can see that the surfer on the left, which is me, I'm able to, I hold onto that bottom turn a bit longer until my surfboard is actually facing the part of the wave that I want to go to. And it's only then that I actually release the compression with a strong sort of jumping movement and then go up into that section with all that speed. Now I think in order to give you an even easier visual on this, we're gonna head outside to the driveway. 
All right, so I've got one of my favorite training tools. It's the Smooth Star. Um, basically, I'll use this for any on land surf training exercises for my clients. And today I want to show you how releasing the bottom turn too early can impact how far and fast you travel up a slope. We're going to be using this driveway and I'm going to be using this cone here as a marker to do the bottom turn around. I want you guys to notice the difference. One thing that's really important to talk about, I think, is finding a neutral position with the arms on the way up. And I'll explain why. If you watch the surfer here, um, the way he does his bottom turn, you can see that right arm. If I play it again, watch that right arm cross in front of the body on the way up the wave. So this is a very subtle little micro adjustment that I've been working on a lot with a lot of my intermediate to advanced surfers. And that's the idea of simultaneously shrugging and releasing the compression out of the bottom of the wave, as opposed to rotating and throwing that right shoulder in front of the body on the way up the wave. Essentially what that means is the surfer caches in their rotation chips before they hit the money spot. And so rather than having a full range of motion to rotate into, as you can see here on the left, the surf on the left has all this space behind him to rotate into. Whereas the surfer who's cached that rotation um, chip in early now only has a remaining 180 degrees to go through as opposed to a 360 degree arc. Now it's really important because rotation during the maneuver makes the maneuver more successful because there is more torque pressure, T-O-R-Q-U-E, pressure um, and disparity between the upper body and the lower body. We get this slinking sort of twisting action happening, which tends to flow on into the lower body and into the surfboard. And what that does, it enables the surfer on the left here, for example, to complete the turn fully by rotating all the way back up to the top right of screen whilst the surfer on the right here has to finish their turn early and actually even gets a counter rotation with the arms at the last point. They're not able to really engage their rail. Notice the flatness of the surfboard over here on the right compared to the left where the rail is really engaged. This is due to a multitude of factors. The uh, intensity of the extension off the bottom and the position of the arms on the way up. I find this too on the back end, which is really interesting. And one of the common mistakes that I see is that people forget that a bottom turn on the back end is a low to high movement as well as a rotation. A lot of people just find themselves rotating without going from low to high. What this does, it tells the surfer's body to twist behind them into the wave face instead of carry them up the wave into their turn section, which is where they wanna be during their maneuver. If we look at the um, difference here and you look at the side by sides, I want you to watch the left of screen for me for a, for a moment. Notice that leading arm of the surfer, the left arm, and notice it go down before it goes up. Now if we watch the surfer on the right, watch the arm go straight behind instead of going down first. Where you look and point is where you go. If we only rotate behind us on our backside bottom turn without going low to high, we don't shift our energy from low to high, we only shift it behind us. Now this is important because if we look at the neutral position here on the back end with the left arm over the lip, the surfer is now able to punch down and across the body on that counter rotation, which is really important because where do we want the body to go? Over onto that toe side rail and back down the wave in order to continue riding. 
if we only rotate in front of the body and only rotate across the body rather than down as well, I find that the surfer tends to follow that um, original impetus and actually end up straight over their board without being able to fully extend that back leg during the maneuver. Hence, they run out of speed and they don't throw as much spray, making the turn a little less impactful. surfing is about kinetics, about moving energy from one place to another. And generally where we send energy is where we go on a wave. And having that as a fundamental underpinning to our entire surfing experience is a really helpful position to take. And it's one that we've applied in my Ultimate Surf Skate program on the surfersroadmap.com. It's got all sorts of training routines, in particular some really good ones on the bottom turn. So make sure you check it out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're not subscribed already, please do so and hit the notification bell. Hit that like button. Let me know in the comments what you're struggling with with your surfing. And I'll see you guys very soon. Thanks for tuning in. Yo. <laughs>